And a very pleasant good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Tornado Talk. Glad you're able to join us where we talk all things Brevard College Tornado Athletics. Have another exciting show on tap for you this evening. But before we get to our guests, let's review what's been going on around the campus of Brevard College. Spring sports just uh, hitting their stride across Brevard College. We're going to touch on a bunch of them this evening and first up baseball big win this weekend taking two out of three over Methodist uh, currently in first place in the USA South Conference USA South pitcher of the week award goes to Jacob Thompson and the tornadoes uh, continue to roll on the baseball side of things now nine and three and in first place in the USA South Conference Next up for the Tornadoes, a non-conference affair versus Bob Jones. That's tomorrow, Tuesday at 4 p.m. at Gilcone Field. Hope to see you there. And then the Tornadoes will hit the road as they continue USA South Conference play Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, one game. Sunday, a doubleheader at Greensboro. Softball, next up for the Tornadoes, will be a trip to William Peace on Saturday in Raleigh, North Carolina. Next home games for the Tornadoes, a doubleheader on Tuesday, April the 16th versus Salem. If you want to come on out to the BC softball field for that one, mark your calendars Tuesday, April the 16th, 1 p.m. Next time we'll see the Tornadoes softball team on their home field. Women's lacrosse, a big win last week, a 13-12 to thriller over Pfeiffer. A uh, big-time performance there. And then the Tornadoes will continue their USA South Conference schedule this weekend back at home at Isla Mel Family Field. Hope to see you there, 11 a.m. versus Huntington. Men's lacrosse. We'll be having some guests from men's lacrosse later in the program. A big one tomorrow as the Tornadoes will take on local rival Warren Wilson, 7 o'clock Tuesday night at Isla Mel Family Field. It's the third annual Battle of the Blue Ridge. We'll get into the Battle of the Blue Ridge and all that's at stake a little later in the show. Men's tennis, a 9-0 win over Mary Baldwin over the weekend at the McCoy Tennis Complex. Hayden LeBlanc, USA South Rookie of the Week for the fourth time this season. Uh, just making headlines, Hayden LeBlanc. Meanwhile, women's tennis getting it done as well, an 8-0 win over Mary Baldwin. And then the two teams will head to Methodist this Saturday in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And the next home match will be Tuesday, 2 p.m. versus Salem. That's when the women's team will be in action at the McCoy Tennis Complex. That's Tuesday, April the 16th. Hope to see you there. That brings us to track and field. And a uh, lot going on around the track and field program right now here at Brevard College, starting with some success this past weekend at the Golden Bulls invite in Charlotte. We'll discuss that and more with our first two guests of the evening as we'll welcome to the program Coach Josh Hall along with Coach Cameron Eisenhower. Uh, Coach Hall, how are you? Pretty good, Phil. How are you? Doing great, thank you. And also with us, on his very first day at the office, you got to hand it to to coach uh, making room for tornado talk. New head cross country coach and assistant track and field coach Cameron Eisenhower making his tornado talk debut. How are you, Coach Eisenhower? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing great. It's great to have both of you on. And uh, let's start with that this past weekend, Coach Hall. Uh, success at the Golden Bulls invite in Charlotte. Um, I know not the full team made the trip, but the ones who did certainly made some noise, including a school record in the NCAA era in the women's four by 100 meter relay. Uh, Coach Hall would love for your thoughts as far as this past weekend in Charlotte. Yeah, honestly, Phil, I think it was good for the team that or the people that didn't go to get them an extra meet. Um, I think over this weekend, it showed us what we needed to work on with that group that went. Um, and I think it's just repetition. Uh, I think if we get a little more uh, repetition in practice, a little more repetition in races, that uh, we're going to really succeed in the conference come April. Uh, outstanding. Uh, also joined by the newest member of the Tornado coaching staff, new head cross-country coach and assistant track and field coach, Cameron Eisenhower. Coach Eisenhower, I know it's been a whirlwind for you today, but you were able to get out to track and field uh, practice. Uh, first, you know, would love to just introduce you to NATO Nation here. Uh, how's it feel to to finally be here at Brevard College and part of the staff? Um, it feels great. I've been uh, working remote uh, for a little while, so it was nice to get on campus and get in the same office as Coach Hall and 
been able to watch practice and um, doing all the onboarding processes with the different departments. And I just really like how everyone works together and how the student athletes uh, are kind to one another and they work hard and they just seem, it just seems like a great place to be. Yeah, no doubt. We're, we're thrilled to have you here. Encourage folks to go back on bctornadoes.com, read the story of Coach Eisenhower's uh, uh, arrival here at Brevard College. Going to be a, a huge part of the program. Uh, coach Hall, it, it's it's awesome to have a, a coach of Coach Eisenhower's caliber and you know joining us right in the middle of track and field season. I know you're excited. Yeah, I am, uh, Phil. It, I've been doing a lot here lately by myself, and so it's really, really good to have some help uh, finally, especially in time for uh, what's coming this Friday. Uh, so we're really, really excited about it, and uh, we're ready to go. Hey, that's what they call in the business, Coach Hall, a segue, a perfect transition to what we're going to talk about next. The inaugural Tornado Classic this Friday, April the 12th at the Frank Patton Track on the campus of Brevard College. Hope folks can come out to this. The Tornadoes last year hosted the USA South Conference Championships, but that was a conference meet, you know, where you're you're just being the host, you know, for the conference and they're running um, much of the things and that sort of deal. But this is a homegrown true home event hosted by the tornadoes on Friday all day at the Frank Patton track. Uh, Coach Hall, uh, please, you know, if you can kind of introduce, you know, the concept of us hosting this this track meet, you know, how it kind of uh, got started, the idea, and now how it feels to be here on meet week. Yeah, um, the dream is finally here, Phil. I will say that um, when I first got here, I got this job back last June. Um, me and the administration staff have both expressed interest in starting a tradition in track and field here, um, start hosting meets. And so here we are, uh, all the planning, all the preparation that we've had for this past year, uh, it's coming down to this Friday. Um, we got some teams coming, uh, that I think are going to be some good competition for us. Uh, especially we got a D one, uh, competitor coming down, uh, right across the road or right across the mountain from us. Uh, I think Western Carolina is going to make the appearance here. Uh, so it'd be cool to have the catamounts, uh, a D1 representative here. Um, but honestly, Phil, I will say it's it's kind of unique to be the first first track meet of the college. Uh, and myself, I've had experience in meet management. I know Coach Eisenhower here is an official himself, so he knows how to officiate a meet efficiently. And so I think it's a good tag team, and I think we know what we're doing. Coach Eisenhower, could you take us behind the curtain a little bit and just what does it take to put on a – a track and field meet on the campus of your, your college, like we're going to do this week? Um, it takes a lot, actually. Um, lining the fields for the sectors, uh, making sure the pits are raked properly, um, setting up the high jump standards properly, um, getting all the hurdles out and making sure they're right and working, and then finding all your officials and paying all your officials, um, doing all that paperwork. Um, and then printing everything off uh, for the score sheets um, and securing a timer and all that fun stuff to make it work. And then obviously you can't do it without the volunteers, your lap counters, your tape pullers, your implement inspectors and retrievers. So it uh, takes a lot to uh, put on a track meet, but um, we really appreciate everybody that's um, volunteered so far to help us out. Yeah, it's certainly a cast of thousands to get an event like this done. It all starts on Friday at 9 a.m. with the women's hammer throw and also the men's javelin. There's more uh, field events throughout the morning. Uh, there's also a 10K that starts at, at 9 a.m. on both the men's and women's side. And then after a uh, special ceremony in the middle of the day around the 1230 uh, time frame, uh, we'll also have a senior day ceremony as part of that. But then we really get into the, the track events, uh, beginning with the, the steeplechase runs. And, you know, we, we see the four by 100 uh, not long after that. And then on down the list. Uh, Coach Hall, um, can you tell us even more about the schedule and maybe from a spectator standpoint, uh, you know, how they might want to divide up their day a little bit? Yeah. Um, so in the morning session, right before 12, um, it's going to be going on at the same time you're going to have multiple throwing events going off at the same time you're going to have some field events that are happening at the same time so the morning uh session will be a little chaotic with a lot of moving pieces um it's where you get into the afternoon session where 
it really starts to smooth down. You really get those running events. You can watch everything at once happen uh, just on the track. So in the morning session, be prepared to look everywhere on that Frank Patton track uh, because there's going to be a lot of competition going on and a lot of uh, moving pieces. Anything to add to that, Coach Eisenhower, as far as, you know, maybe a suggestion to a, a first-time fan coming out to a collegiate track and field event and how they might want to approach it from a spectator standpoint? Um, I would definitely uh, have them not only – uh, the hundred and the four by one are obviously um, more key events in track and field, but going to see the hammer or going to see the high jump or hurdle um, more the technical events to see all the hard work that the student athletes put in to try to master those concepts and execute it. Um, I think like the triple jump, the hammer um, high jump hurdles all are great events to watch, especially if you're a first timer. And uh, coach hall, you, you mentioned how the day sort of, uh, smooths out throughout the day. Well, you get the 400 meter hurdles followed by the 200 meter followed by a 5,000 meter distance race. And then the exciting four by 400 relay on both the women's and men's side to, to conclude it as far as that sort of crescendo coach hall, you know, um, a lot of excitement as you come down the stretch on that schedule. Yeah, it is. I, I think I spaced it out to where you get accurate amount of rest for each athlete uh, because you, you don't want to go 100 and a 200 back to back. Uh, you, pretty much the same people are going to run that. Um, so you kind of want to space it out per those athletes. Uh, you take that into consideration when making a schedule. Um, but yeah, a lot of excitement. I think it's going to be a good meet. It's definitely going to be a learning uh, curve for this whole place even myself uh being a first-time host so um I'm, I'm very excited i'm willing to learn and hopefully the tradition will start friday uh, outstanding uh coach eisenhower we'll, we'll wrap up with you with this one you know um also the head cross country coach here at brevard college uh, an incredible um legacy of distance running here at brevard i'm i'm doing my portion of the show from the Wittick conference room as we speak, where there's all sorts of trophies as far as, you know, where this program's been would love for your comments as far as, you know, coming into this role at Brevard college, cross country and distance running. Uh, what a tradition we've got here at Brevard. Yeah, it's a great tradition. I'm actually uh, going to meet tomorrow with coach Wittick um, to ask a few questions, kind of learn more about the history from the man himself and, uh, I look forward to creating a new chapter and hopefully uh, competing for uh, championships as well. And just a beautiful area to run. And um, I love endurance running and I'm excited to see uh, the new heights that we're going to be able to take it to. Outstanding. Well, coaches, stick with us just a moment or two longer. We're going to invite in a couple of the track and field student athletes who we'll see in action this Friday at the inaugural Tornado Classic as Sandra Diaz Martinez and Garrett Spengler have joined the program. Coach Hall, you've been working with these two, um, you know, all year long. Uh, so we'll leave it to you to introduce these two to NATO Nation. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'll go ahead and ladies first, uh, Miss Sandra <laughs> Diaz Martinez, uh, just a lively uh, personnel girl. Uh, she <laughs> likes to show her emotions and likes to, uh, she's always happy. She's always smiling. Uh, brings a smile to everybody on the team and Mr. Garrett Spangler, uh, one of the hardest working people out there um, pretty much on the distance side. Uh, he, he works hard every day. He does everything I tell him to do. Um, so, and really two very good leaders right here that you're about to talk to Phil. Outstanding. Well, look forward to get to know them further and also can't wait to see these two in the entire track and field team compete on Friday on the campus of Brevard College. This is going to be uh, outstanding on Friday. Really excited uh, to get folks out there. Coach Hall, Coach Eisenhower, thanks for joining the program. Uh, great job this evening. We'll see you at the Frank Patton track on Friday. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you there. All right, there they go. And as they introduce these two in that upper right location, Garrett Spangler. How are you, Garrett? I'm doing good. How about you? Doing great. And also Sandra Diaz Martinez making a return to the show. How are you, Sandra? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? All right. First things first, y'all. 
<laughs> tornado classic. It's here. It's this week. Do yes. you believe it? So uh, we'll start with you, Garrett. You know, just what does it mean for you and also the team to be able to host your own event and to to have this event happen on the campus of Brevard College on Friday? Um, I think a lot of us are really excited. Last time we raced on our own track, it was at conference last year, like you said before. And um, I think overall, a lot of us had really good experiences at conference last year. Um, and so we're excited to have another run at it. We run on this track every day. It's a beautiful location. Um, it looks like we're going to have really good weather, good conditions. So I think we're all just really excited and amped up to race on our home turf. So. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Sandra, could you add to that as far as just how excited you are for this event? I can't wait for everyone, like my friends and for the school to see what we've been working on all season. And hopefully faculty and staff will excuse more students to go out and see our track meet. Very, very good. I like that directive right there, uh, Sandra. Good, great thinking in terms of the promoter hat, you know, <laughs> you've got on there. Uh, great stuff. Well, let's talk about, you know, the events that you all will be taking on. I know both of you have dabbled with different events and different combinations of events, not only throughout your career, but also this season. And uh, we'll start with you, Sandra. You know, tell us a little bit about this week, uh, what we will be able to see you racing in. Um, so this week I will be racing in the women's steeplechase and the women's four by four. I'm more excited for the steeplechase because um, it's just something that I've always wanted to try throughout my college experience. And I'm so glad to, to finally experience it. And yeah, if I get down the water jump, I'm pretty sure I'll be set for the whole race. One quick follow-up on that, Sandra, before we get to Garrett. Um, I believe it was your your collegiate debut at, at Lenore Ryan uh, in the steeplechase. You ended up finishing third. Uh, tell us a little bit about that race and maybe some of the things you learned about steeplechase uh, that's going to help you this week. Honestly, the race is uh, the race is difficult, but I think it's really fun. Um, I was nervous because I was the only D three girl going in that race. And for me to finish third, I think was pretty good. Um, I did fall in the water pit a couple times, but <laughs> I got back up and I finished it. So that's all that uh, matters. Awesome stuff. So steeplechase uh, for Diaz Martinez, along with that four by 400 relay, a lot to look forward to there. Garrett, I know you've been experimenting with different events and working with with uh, the coaches and so forth uh tell us what you're up to this week uh this week i will be just racing the 5k unfortunately uh was hoping to get a steeple chase in but it just didn't work out scheduling wise um so this weekend it's just a f focusing on the 5k which is what i've been training for a little bit more recently and we mentioned to, you know, when we were talking to the coaches just now, how the 5K is late in the day. It's the second to the last event, mm -hmm. uh, right before that 4x400 relay, uh, tentatively a 5, 10 p.m. Eastern uh, start for you. Uh, tell us about that, Garrett, as far as, you know, the event being at the end of the, the competition, but also that time of day. Um, for me personally, I think that's better for me. I don't have classes on Friday, so it gives me time to go to the race and watch. And personally for me, watching races and watching my teammates race and succeed and do well that kind of amps me up and gets me like in the zone and ready for my race so honestly i think this will like help me prepare for my race yeah awesome stuff uh we'll stick with you garrett senior year you know the senior out of irmo south carolina uh we're gonna you know celebrate the seniors on friday yourself and in, included uh you've been hard at work not just with track and field but on the cross country side as well uh can you kind of sum up your your experience here at bc and what it's been like for you if you've able to you know take a breath at any point oh that's a good question um it's definitely had its ups and downs. My experience at Brevard overall, I'd say, was pretty positive. Um, being a student athlete here has taught me a lot of lessons, and I'm, I'm so grateful for it and the opportunity to run collegiately. Um, it's definitely had its highs and lows, and at the end of the day, it's definitely taught me what type of runner I want to be and how to use those skills in, in the future. Um, but I can't be – I could not be more grateful for the coaches and teammates uh, that I've had on campus here. It's been amazing. Awesome. And uh, Garrett, tell us a little bit about uh, the degree you're, you're working on that, you, you, you know, you'll be walking across that stage before we know it. And also any uh, future plans? Um, yeah. I'll, so I'm graduating with an environmental studies degree and a minor in wilderness leadership. And 
currently the idea is probably to go, move back home. Um, I'd love to stay here, but just not kind of working in the cards for me. So I'm probably gonna have to go home and I'm thinking I'll end up working either in horticulture at Riverbank Zoo um, or maybe work at the South Carolina State Museum um, in the geology field there. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe a master's degree, um, just kind of seeing where the wind takes me. So. Uh, outstanding a couple exciting opportunities it sounds like garrett and uh you know I, i'll see you before graduation time but uh publicly congratulations on just an outstanding career here at brevard college now sandra diaz martinez a junior you know and i know you're you guys are, are a tight group and so forth uh you're excited for the for the seniors as well uh, can you tell us a little bit about you know what it what it means to see you know your your friends in their senior year and, and get ready to graduate and so forth Yes, it's like a bittersweet moment. I'm glad that to have met them and my time here, but I'm sad to see them go because they have made my Brevard College experience a better, just better, better in general. <laughs> awesome. always what? put a smile on my face and push me to be the best person I could ever be. Excellent. Great. Really well said there, Sandra. And tell us a little bit about what you're working on academically. Um, I am a psychology major with a minor in health science. And yeah, I want to get into social work after I graduate. Very good. Well, you two know the drill. Tornado Talk always includes the opportunities for thank yous and shout outs. And uh, we'll let the senior go first here this time around. Uh, Garrett, you got any shout outs for us? Uh, yeah, first shout out I got to give to my parents. Um, they've always done a really good job of supporting me and being there. And they've shown up to literally every race that they can. Um, so I got to give a shout out to them. Uh, of course, my girlfriend, my coaches and my teammates. Um, I, I wouldn't be the athlete, the student and the person who I am without all those people. So I got to thank them. Well said. Uh, Garrett, uh, we'll now hand it over to Sandra Diaz Martinez. Got any shout outs for us, Sandra? Um, I would like to shout out my friends, my parents, uh, all the coaches who have coached me previously, especially my high school coach who has pushed me to move out of state and have this opportunity here at Brevard College. Um, yeah. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, folks, Friday, this Friday, clear your schedules, clear everything. Just like Sandra said, you know, talk to your professors, talk to your employers, whatever you need to do, whatever note you need uh, to take in, clear out the day because beginning at 9 a.m. and going into the early evening, the inaugural Tornado Classic on Friday, April 12th, Here's two of the athletes uh, you'll have the chance to see compete. It's going to be outstanding on the campus of Brevard College. Hope to see folks there. Garrett, Sandra, thanks for joining the show. We'll see you Friday at the Frank Patton track. Thanks for having Thank me. All right, there they go. We're going to switch gears quickly and head towards men's lacrosse as Great to have back on the program now, assistant men's lacrosse coach, Brenner Woodcock. Coach Woodcock, how are you? Good, though. How you doing? Doing great. Hey, appreciate you joining us. Coming fresh off the practice field at Isla Mel Family Field. First things first, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, how practice went today and what you guys uh, were working on out at Isla Mel Family Field. Yeah, practice today went well. Uh, game day tomorrow, rivalry game. So uh, the guys are excited. They got after it today. We got it was a quick practice, but we got in, needed what we needed to do, and get out. So it was good. It was good. Well, you mentioned it, Coach. A rivalry game tomorrow. Uh, the Battle of the Blue Ridge. I love this rivalry, by the way. You know, I don't know if we, if you know, um, colleges have enough of these kind of things. You can't get enough of them, uh, truly. Where there's two local schools, you become rivals. You know, for whatever reason. And then there's bragging rights, but also, in this case, a trophy on the line for the Battle of the Bridge. It's Brevard versus Warren Wilson tomorrow at 7 p.m. at Isla Mel Family Field. Uh, Coach Woodcock, the Battle of the Blue Ridge, you know, can you tell us a little bit of the origin story of this deal and how much it means to the kids? Yeah, so it actually started the year before I got here. I think they emailed Coach LeMay and wanted to start one, start a rivalry game. Um, basically, they said, we'll make the trophy, you guys name it. So Coach LeMay and I think some of the team at that point, too, they were like, let's call it the Battle of the Blue, Blue Ridge. And so it runs right between both campuses. So that's a little bit about that. 
And then uh, I think they had a blacksmith on campus that actually made the trophy. So that was pretty cool. And they didn't order it from anywhere. It was like homemade, which was nice. Yeah, kind of kind of a cool backstory there. Warren Wilson College up in Swannanoa, not too far from here. And yes, indeed, you're exactly right, Coach. Like they they got it done on campus. I think they even have that's part of their curriculum there. I think that they do blacksmithing. Yeah. And it's a gorgeous trophy. Well, the good news is since the start of the rivalry, the co- the trophies lived here at Brevard College because the winning team gets to keep the trophy for the following year. I know you were part of last year's win up in Swannanoa. Can you reflect back on that matchup, how that one kind of went down and obviously how it felt to, to win the trophy again? Yeah, so early on in the game, it was a little tight until I would say second quarter and then we kind of took it away from there. Um, but no, I mean, it, it definitely gives you that, it gives you energy, it gives the guys energy, something to play for is how we kind of say it. Um, so we're pumped, they're pumped. It should be a good game tomorrow and I'm just, I'm glad it's at home so everybody can see it. Yeah, no doubt. Well, right around the corner as well, Coach, is Senior Day. You know, so that's coming up quickly here. And uh, fans will have that opportunity, not this Saturday, but the next. And a outstanding senior class, grand total of six seniors, plus a graduate student, uh, Parker Corbett. uh, Just a a tremendous group who's got it done both on and off the field. Uh, Coach Woodcock, you know, when you think about this senior class, you know, what they bring to the program, what comes to mind? Yeah, so last year when I first started, they, they welcomed me with open arms. Um, they're, they're a group of guys that will work hard for you, and they, they want to be there. They try to put in the effort every single day. Um, we're going to miss them next year, but I think they laid a great foundation for the years to come for this program. Yeah, my apologies if I miss anyone, but uh, it's a large class. Atticus Cooper, uh, part of that class, Jacob Gravely, uh, Jacob Hernandez, uh, Nate Stone, Will Scoggins, um, also Michael Peters, uh, just a, a great group all the way around um, and uh, look forward to, to celebrating that senior class as well. Well, coach, you know, it's interesting, you know, coaching staff for lacrosse, how you all divide up the responsibilities on the field. Uh, tell us a little bit, some of your duties and, you know, what, who you work with in terms of the lacrosse team the most. Yeah, so I'm, I work with the offensive guys. So some stuff that goes into that is I'm scouting the opposing defenses just to look for keys and stuff they do. Um, so plays, drills during practice, all the stuff that goes into the offensive side of the ball, that's, that's where you'll find me. Yeah, and so, for instance, Coach, you know, oftentimes, you know, we'll see – the tornadoes have the ball, and then there's a timeout taken. You know, the tornadoes are, are setting up offensively. Can you tell us a little bit how that all sort of goes down, you know, especially for sort of the, the novice lacrosse fan uh, who might not know the, the ins and outs? You know, timeout's called, team comes to the sideline. What happens from there? So once they come over, we're, we're trying to key off of what they've done or if they're making any mistakes. If somebody's sliding too early to the guy with the ball, we'll drop a play, so we'll, we'll pick on that area, so to speak. Um, yeah, so then we just try to execute after that. I'll draw something up. The guys will go out there and they'll execute it. Last for one for you, Coach, before you invite in a couple of your student athletes. You know, you, you're one of these rare uh, stories where you actually played collegiately at a USA South Conference rival, uh, Averett. You know, you started to get experience there in the, the coaching side of things as well. And now here you are at Brevard College. Uh, tell us a little bit about how that experience has been uh, for you. You know, and, you know, maybe you had some uh, working knowledge of Brevard, but now you're, you know, part of the coaching staff in year two. Uh, how's that been going from one USA South Conference team to another? I'd say it's definitely been an adjustment, but not too big of one. Uh, I've played against most of these teams for five years. I guess this would technically be my seventh year, um, five playing and then second year coaching here. So a little bit of adjustment just from the playing side to the coaching side. But I kind of like coach, cho- coaching changes don't really happen all that much in our conference. Like there's been, I think there was two this year and that was the most there's been really since I've been in school since 2016, 2017. Um, so, yeah, I mean, not too big of an adjustment just because I know everybody, but definitely one for sure as far as on the other side of the ball. 
Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Well, tomorrow, the Battle of the Blue Ridge versus Warren Wilson at Isla Mel Family Field. That's 7 o'clock start. We mentioned the USA South Conference. You're still in the middle of conference play, but you you work in this non-conference uh, matchup. Back at, back at it in conference play at Greensboro on Saturday the 13th. And we mentioned Senior Day, Saturday, April 20th versus Huntingdon at Isla Mel Family Field. Under the lights, by the way, 7 o'clock uh, start for that one. So mark your calendars there. Coach, can you stick with us a couple moments longer? We're going to invite in a couple of your student athletes who've been waiting patiently backstage. So we'll Absolutely. bring in now Tyler Cameron and also Jake and Jacob Gravely. Uh, great to have these two here on the program. Coach Woodcock, let NATO Nation know what these two student athletes are all about. JG, he's been a leader for us since I've heard his freshman year. He's definitely been one the past two years that I've been here. And we're, he's one of the guys we're going to miss next year for sure. Uh, Tyler Cameron, yes, sir, no, sir type of guy, freshman. Uh, he's actually from around where I'm from, too, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but he does everything we ask of him as well. So we're excited. We're excited for his future, and we're going to miss JG next year for sure. Outstanding. Well, Coach, best of luck uh, in your continued preparation for the battle of the Blue Ridge tomorrow. We'll see you out there at Isla Mel Family Field. Thanks for joining the program. Yes, sir. Thank you, Phil. All right, there he goes, Coach Woodcock. Tyler Cameron joining us from the men's lacrosse team. How are you, Tyler? Good. How are you doing, Phil? Great to have you here for your Tornado Talk debut. And also Jacob Gravely here as well. Jacob, how are you? Fantastic. How about yourself? Doing great. Doing great. Well, what a uh, evening to have you guys on. It's the eve of the Battle of the Blue Ridge. And Jacob, since you've been around a couple years here, you know, in your senior year, you've been here for the entire Battle of the Blue Ridge series. Uh, tell us just, you know, how exciting this is for, for you and, and for the team and, um, you know, your thoughts uh, on the rivalry between Warren Wilson and Brevard and how this has all gone down. Well, I can tell you right now, I mean, everybody is ex as excited as they can possibly be. I mean, this is a huge game every year for us. All Every year that I've been here, we've played it besides my freshman year and we've we've kept the trophy. And I promise you now it's not it's not going to move. I promise you it's not. That's there all yeah, there it is right there. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're really getting this rivalry uh, heated up, you know, on, on oh, the yeah. eve of things here. Uh, Tyler, you know, freshman season, but I'm sure you've heard about this deal, right? You know, this battle of the Blue Ridge. Uh, what What's your understanding of it and what are you noticing as far as the team's excitement level? Um, I notice everybody's really, really amped to play the game. And I've just heard it's a battle every single year. you got to try and keep that trophy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt. And then uh, today's practice, you guys, uh, we talked to Coach coming fresh off the practice field. Uh, how was the workout today, Jacob? Oh, it was great. Everybody was being competitive. Everybody was fighting all day. It was it was great. And that's exactly what we're going to bring into tomorrow. It will be phenomenal. Awesome stuff. And Tyler, uh, good day of practice for yourself also? Oh, yes, sir. Everybody was just like Jacob said, real competitive. Everybody executed the way they should have been. And hopefully we can just bring that energy into tomorrow. All right, Jacob, senior defender out of Monroe, North Carolina. Let's educate our viewers a little bit on the sport of lacrosse. And tell us about that defensive position, that defender position, you know, your responsibilities during any given play. And, you know, what makes a, a solid defender in men's lacrosse? So whenever you want to start playing defense, the whole the big part of it is your footwork. You're always going to be moving your feet. You always have to react to how the attackman's playing. Um, I always try to make the attackman do what I want him to do rather than what he wants me to do. And in Tyler's scenario, I mean, he's an LSM. I'm a close defender. He'll play more middies. I'll play more attackmen. Attackmen are a little shiftier. Middies are quicker, so they'll they'll get downhill a lot faster. So we got different jobs, but they both, same thing. You don't want him to put the ball in the back of the net. Yep. Uh, Tyler, uh, Jacob mentioned it. LSM stands for long stick midfielder. And uh, yeah, key part of the formula to make any lacrosse team go. Uh, tell us what it's like to play long stick midfielder. And, you know, what are that that what's that position's responsibilities? Oh, it's uh, it's really fun to uh, get to whack people a lot. And your responsibility really uh, drive your man down the alley once he starts dodging, dodging on you. And uh, just try and keep them out of that crease as good as you can. All right, a follow up, Tyler, for you. The stick itself, you know, it's called a long stick. I can kind of tell from from up in the press box that it is longer than the other sticks. But can you tell us exactly, you know, 
um, the, the differences between a normal stick and the long stick, other than obviously a little bit longer? Um, well, the difference is you're only going to see defensive players really uh, using long sticks. And I'm pretty sure they can be anywhere from 52 inches to 76, I believe. And, and, are, uh, and are they harder to, to, to handle at the same time, you know, in terms of the, the stick work that, you know, you guys make happen? Oh yeah, definitely. Very hard to keep it to your body, like keep it close to your body. Like you can with a short stick. So you really just got to, as we say, walk the dog with it a lot where you're holding it all the way out in front of you. Ah, very, very nice. Well, appreciate that insight. And in Jacob, you know, we we're seeing some of your stats come across 120 ground balls, 21 cause turnovers, um, you know, and, you know, you're just getting it done. Um, Jacob, tell us a little bit, those two statistical categories, because we see them on the box score, but ground balls and cause turnovers, what's the key to, to getting those done? So the cause turnovers mostly, I mean, a lot of people like chasing after the stick and trying to get the ball out. But if you just play solid defense and make sure they don't get in front of the goal, the ball will come out at some point. And then once it comes out, you pick up the ground ball, you'll get both stats and you just want to get the ball over to your offense. That's our whole goal as a defense is to keep it out and get it to our offense so they can put it in the bag. And, and, I, and part of that as well is the successful clear attempt, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what you want to do. And we've done a pretty good job of that so far all year. And we're going to hope to stay 100% through tomorrow as well. Awesome stuff. Well, folks, make sure you head on out there tomorrow. Eyes Lamel Family Field, the Battle of the Blue Ridge, 7 o'clock start. Uh, Tyler, a uh, freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina. Tell us a little bit about your your background playing lacrosse. When did you first pick up a stick and you know how did it go from there? Um, I actually didn't even know lacrosse was a sport until I was uh, getting into high school. So sophomore year, I heard about it, but uh, I never picked up a stick until my junior year of high school at West Brunswick High School. And uh, I just fell in love with the sport as soon as I played my first game, and I've just been playing it ever since. Awesome stuff. Um, same opportunity for you, Jacob. Tell us about your lacrosse journey. So I started – I picked up my first stick in eighth grade and played at Sun Valley all the way throughout high school and uh, got fortunate enough to be able to come here. And I was just stuck with defense the entire way because it was, it was fun to do the whacking and not the one getting whacked. So I, I really enjoyed that. That was good. Yeah, I, I seem to notice that from you, you defenders. <laughs> you certainly prefer to be on, the, on that side of the ball. But certainly those, those attackmen are uh, a key, key part – of the formula as well. Uh, Tyler, uh, freshman year, so don't expect you to have it all figured out already, but have you, you zeroed in on a, a major? What are you working on academically? Um, currently, I'm undeclared, but uh, I am leaning towards a health science degree. Very so good. hopefully uh, major in that if I decide to uh, end up going that route. Outstanding. Certainly a great program here at Brevard College. Jacob, senior season. Uh, tell us a little bit of what the degree is going to be in and do you have future plans beyond that? Yeah, currently I'm a, I'm also, I'm a health science major at, at the moment. And uh, I also have a minor in history, but I'm going to try and go to um, a surgical technology program at a community college near my house after, after I graduate here and see what that does. Or also physical therapy I've been very interested in recently. So we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Outstanding, outstanding stuff, Jacob. Congratulations in advance. Uh, we're going to keep celebrating you and the, your fellow seniors. And, you know, we talked to, to Coach Woodcock about it, Jacob. Um, this senior class, it's a, it's a deep group. You guys have, have been together a, a long time. Um, have you kind of put it in perspective or reflected a little bit of just, you know, what it means to be part of the senior class and how it's kind of coming to a, 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 you know, crescendo here for y'all? Yeah, no, it's been uh, it's been really fun for us. I know our the seasons haven't gone the way we wanted them to, but in the end, we just all got to play together and we got to spend all four years with each other, and it was great every single moment that we could make. And then this year, I mean, we're just gonna try and we're just gonna try and finish it out as as hard as we can. I mean, this is our last year that we'll get to play with each other, unless it's out in some random summer league somewhere. But we'll just try to keep the brotherhood going and see if we can lay the foundation for for future players for Brevard, like Tyler. And, and, and Tyler, um, would love your comments on this senior class and these upperclassmen, you know, um, have they helped you in, you know, your arrival here as a collegiate student athlete and part of the Tornadoes? Oh, yes, sir. Most definitely. 
Uh, as soon as I stepped on campus, they all made me feel more than welcome, uh, helped me with anything that I needed, gave me tips about college lacrosse going into our first game, and they still do before every single game. Uh, they help me out in any way that I need, and I know that I, I can depend on them. Awesome stuff. Well, Tyler Cameron, Jacob Gravely, really appreciate you joining the show. But before we let you go, you've got the opportunity for any thank yous or shout outs. Anybody you, you want to, you know, give a little hat tip to. Uh, Jacob, the senior, will let you have the floor first. Uh, thanks to my family, my family, my coaches, everybody that's been on my teams. Um, definitely all the seniors, Atticus, Stone, Hernandez, Will, all of them. And uh, definitely Lucas Harvey back home. Hey, I know he wanted to be here, so I know he wants that. Very cool. Good, great stuff, uh, Jacob, and, and congrats again. Can't wait to you know, see you close it out here the rest of this season. Tyler Cameron, same opportunity for you. Shout-outs? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, very thankful and uh, happy I had the support of my mom, my dad, brother, sisters, old coaches and teammates from high school, and my coaches and teammates now. Well said. Tyler Cameron, Jacob Gravely, two of the student athletes you'll be able to see tomorrow night, 7 p.m., the Battle of the Blue Ridge, Brevard versus Warren Wilson at Islamel Family Field. Trophy on the line. See if the Tornadoes can continue to you know, keep it right here on the campus of Brevard College. Tyler, Jacob, great job this evening. Thanks for joining the show. Thank you. Yes, sir. Have a good night. All right. We're going to switch gears once again and head to the baseball diamond as Tornadoes coming off a – Another series win over Methodists this past weekend at Gil Cone Field. And we've got the whole coaching staff here with us once again. Coach Victory, how are you? Happy to be here, Phil. Outstanding. And also with us, uh, Coach Steve Huckey. How are you, Coach? Always doing well. <laughs> Outstanding. Co mic on. And Coach Vinny Carone with us also. Coach Carone, how are you? Good, good. How are you, Phil? Outstanding. Well, great to be with you guys. Uh, what a pair of weekends we've seen the Tornadoes uh, these last couple weeks. A trip to NC Wesleyan, win two of three there, and then take two of three over Methodists uh, at home. Tornadoes um, in the driver's seat and first place in the USA South Conference. Uh, Coach Victory, uh, we'll start with you. You know, just the significance of these last two weeks and, you know, uh, winning both those series against two very tough ball clubs year in and year out. Yeah, I think it was uh, a great accomplishment. And, you know, it's a building block for what we're trying to succeed at the end of the year. Um, going on the road has been tough for the program since I've been here. And that's been a, a point of emphasis for us is to try to be better on the road and taking those series on the road. Uh, we had to have a lot of guys step up in, in different ways, uh, missing Connor Crosby heading into the weekend. Uh, you know, Cam Cook had to step up and he's continued to do that over the last four years. And then a couple guys get a little bit banged up throughout the series and, and other guys step right in and the you know whole lineup just kind of kept flowing. And that was huge for us. Uh, and then to come back home, you know, we expect to win here. We expect to do really well at home. Uh, but we had had you know, some trouble with Methodist last season. Uh, but the guys came prepared. They were still focused. Uh, I don't think they let you know one good weekend get to their heads. It was, we well, just got to go back to what we're doing and keep playing and keep playing. And they did a great job of that. They just kind of went right back to work on Saturday and did what they needed to do. Uh, and, you know, I think that's been the focus is now we're getting ready for next weekend and, you know, just attacking the next task at hand. Outstanding. Well, it's it's been a lot of fun to to watch the tornadoes in action these last couple of weeks. Uh, Coach Crone, what what have you observed these last couple of weeks as far as these key series and tornadoes winning four of six? Yeah, I think I think last time we were on here, it was kind of like we we have the talent, but we're not playing to our full potential yet, and we knew it was just a matter of time before the bats started getting hot and guys started playing well. And I think the last few weeks, the talent has really shown and come through and. It's good to see it come to fruition. It's good to see guys who you know are talented to succeed at a level that you expect them to succeed at. And they're doing it by having a lot of fun. Like they enjoy spending their time together. Coach Victory made a comment this week when we were on the bus to uh, NC Wesley and that they were just all hanging out, have a good time. And he was like, holy crap, we're going to win this series just because he, he sent the camaraderie of the group. They're all comfortable with each other. And I think that's what has allowed them to be successful because they know that the guys have their backs, whether they succeed or fail. 
And Coach Huckey, we've seen incredible production up and down the lineup, you know, uh, whether it be a guy like Lucas Granada going five for five and, you know, uh, on Saturday in the Methodist series, or, you know, we've seen the the explosive bats of guys like Logan Clark and uh, Kale Ayler and Frankie Vasquez these last couple weeks. And then uh, guys like Kenny Pridmore, who we're going to have on the, on the show in a little bit as well. And CP Pyle uh, getting it done just, one through nine, you know, uh, it's got to be tough on opponents. What are you noticing, and especially on that offensive end, Coach? I just see our guys being more patient. I see them uh, really battling too, you know, and you know, being aggressive sometimes in early counts, um, not getting themselves in a two-strike hole. But then when they do, they're uh, I think uh, CP, I think uh, you know, I think Hayden, a couple of those guys to this weekend had like you know six plus pitch at bats. Um, and it's, it's kind of carried over since, you know, last weekend, the weekend before, you know, you just saw it more and more and, and the guys are just more focused during the week, um, getting more aggressive, getting into what we're trying to get accomplished. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's start, I think what they're feeling, they're seeing it paying off the stuff that we've been doing from time to time and starting to pay off or getting clutch hits with the guys in scoring position or making the pitchers pitch. I mean, we're getting walked a lot. And uh, I think that's a lot of it, too, is our, our, our batters are being a little more patient. You know, we have our tendencies where we start putting some runs up and we start swinging big because our eyes get big. And, and But then I think our guys find a way to kind of get themselves back, refocus, and realize that's not what we've been doing. And, uh, you know, I think it's just, they're starting to, to, to sense that uh, they can make some things happen when they get out there and, and are aggressive but yet patient. Well, Coach Victor, you, you mentioned this as a building block, what we've seen these last couple of weeks. Well, the the building continues with actually a non-conference uh, game scheduled for tomorrow, 4 o'clock at Gilcone Field. We're going to be keeping an eye on the, the weather as well, I, I understand. But, uh, Coach, uh, I'd love to, to hear your, your thoughts on a non-conference game midweek like this in the middle of the conference um, run here and you know, how this is meaningful you know, for the continued progression of the team. Yeah, I think one of the tr difficult things that I've had to traverse down here is just the abundance of weekends that we've had compared to when you're coaching up north. We've played less midweek games than than normal, and I think I'm trying to fix that in our schedule going forward because it's a way to keep the guys you know, in tempo and, and feeling their swings throughout the week. And the other part is it lets some other guys have to step up, especially on the pitching staff side when – you know, maybe we're able to get through most of the weekends with six, seven, eight guys, but you know, we need eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 to be ready come playoff time and, and they don't get as many innings. And, you know, I, I want to see what they can do and how they can help us as we get deeper and deeper into this run. Uh, so we'll see a lot of arms get to get a chance to go out and pitch, uh, continue to work on, you know, getting ready out of the bullpen and doing those things and, and having to pitch to win in a, in a midweek. Um, see some other guys in the lineup too, because you know it's getting a little bit deeper. We're able to rest some guys a little bit, uh, and again test those backup bats and, and those guys that are going to have to have meaningful swings for us down the stretch uh, when you get into tight ball games and you're making changes and, and doing whatever. Uh, so I think it's a good experience to have this here uh, and to have that chance to just let some guys play and go out there you know, and like ease off the the pressure of every weekend a little bit and just be able to play baseball and and let things come to you. If you're struggling a little bit, you can get back out there and try to get back to it. If you're feeling yourself, go out there and go five for five. That's that's great too. Um, but it'll be a good little breakup of the, the week and the monotony of practice, 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 practice. And I think it'll be good for these guys. Coach Corona, I see see a nod in your head there, and you know it's a deep roster here at Brevard College, and you know there's only so many spots in the lineup, you know, for for any given you know conference game and so forth. Big opportunity tomorrow, uh, like Coach was saying, but you know would love for your your comments on just the depth of this year's Tornadoes team, and you know how how those guys are ready to go, whatever the situation might be. Yeah, I think our depth has played a huge role in the conference already. Against NC Westland. Lucas Granada got hit by a pitch in game one and wasn't able to go in game two because he was so tight. And so all of a sudden, Kale being versatile, we can put Kale in the outfield. And then Colson Miller comes in and he gets the first RBIs of the game to give us the lead. Um, and then this weekend, kind of a similar situation. Uh, Logan Clark gets hit by a line drive and can't go out and play the outfield. So he got to move Kale to the outfield again. And he comes in and delivers a big home run on game three this weekend. So he's played a huge role. Um, Nico Bartolotti, a freshman, uh, he was freshman of the week a few weeks ago. He's just been consistent in the DH role when he's gotten his opportunities. And 
even a guy like Easton King, who's had fewer opportunities, but still gets pinch hit roles occasionally. Um, I think it was the first weekend against SVU. He came off the bench and delivered a go-ahead triple. So all those guys who are maybe not getting consistent playing time, but are there on the bench and waiting for their opportunities. And I know probably deserve more chances than they've got because they're talented enough, but there's just so many guys, like you said, on this roster and this lineup so deep, everybody's playing so well. Um, it's hard to get spots for them. Even, um, Gavin McCoy, G money, we call him. He had a big weekend too. He, he played well in a developmental game and came in a DH and had to go ahead double in that one. So you see time and time again, these guys who are like the 10th, 11th, 12th guy off the bench coming in and serving a purpose and making big plays for us to be in this point. And you could talk about Frankie Vasquez, Kelly Ehler, all those guys, all you want, but some of the difference makers have been these like 10th, 11th, 12th guys off the bench. And so it's good to get them a full game of opportunities um, and some other guys like Josh who comes in and runs the bases so well and has scored a winning run against Pfeiffer. Like the list goes on and on. So it's good to get them a full game of opportunities to play and hopefully go out and get another win and continue the streak that we've been on. Coach Huckey, having a depth chart like that on, on a on a baseball club where you've got guys who you, you feel great just sliding them into these different roles and so forth, they can go a long way, correct? Yes, you know, especially when you play the number of innings. You know, we play three nine inning games, and and you know those sixth, seventh, and eighth innings of those games are pretty critical, especially in that you know that third game. And if you got someone's a little bit wore out, someone gets hurt, banged up for a little bit, you got some guys that are just chomping at the bit to come in and. You know, it makes it a little tougher, too, when you got guys that come in and do very, very well. You know, I'm glad I'm not the guy making the lineup out here every day because, you know, sometimes that gets a little bit tough. You got a kid riding hot. You know, do we keep going with that kid or we go back to the guy who's been, you know, the starter? I mean, what do we do? We move some things around. Like like uh, Vinny said, we've been able to move some guys around. Um, you know, Cale being versatile going out in the outfield, um, he doesn't – and his eye twice when you say go out to the outfield, he just grabs his glove and goes, and then somebody else steps into his role at first base. And you know, Colson come in and delivered huge. I mean, that's somebody one of the longest home runs I've seen at that at Gil Cone Field since I've been here. And and uh, um, it's just been fun to see those guys and the excitement in the dugout and those guys staying focused on the game because there is an opportunity that they might be called to go in and do do the job, you know. And then Nico, Nico's my guy, I like Nico. He's a kid, I think, puts a little pressure on some of those other infielders because he can do some things well in the infield as well. And they see him having a good uh, a good day at the plate, and they're like, oh, I better get myself going again. So it's just it's some friendly competition during the week to help us get better. Yeah, it sounds like it's, it's contagious a lot that uh, goes yeah. on there in terms of, uh, you know, the the uh, good vibes and the, the production from the Tornadoes. Well, Coach Victory, this past weekend was also alumni uh, weekend at Brevard College at Gil Cone Field. I know this is something you've been, you know, uh, working towards and so forth. It was so cool to see, you know, um, these alumni back on on campus. Uh, we had guys like Jack Atkinson and uh, Peter Fomero, Brett Burchett all up on the broadcast with us. Uh, Jason Jucker throughout the ceremonial first pitch. Uh, these are all guys who, you know, who who coached or who played under you, Coach. And, you know, I know it's gratifying to see them come back and give back to the program and be so excited about the program. I, I've struggled to try to put into words, you know, what that was like for me. I, I know I texted a couple of them that I, I didn't see them as much as I, I wanted to. I wanted to spend some time with them. Um, but I know they were also like busy with each other. And, and that's that's great. I love that they still want to see each other and still be around each other. And they know, you know, we're busy on our end, too. I, I've said it on, on multiple occasions that we're not here as a program if – they weren't willing to do the things that we asked them to do. We came in and asked them to do a lot more than they were used to doing and to change their level of expectations of what work looks like, what practice is going to look like and how we're going to approach games. And they could have run from it and they could have said, that's not for me. I don't want to do this. But instead they said, yeah, absolutely. What do we need to do? How do we get there? And the, I think the change here for those guys happened so quickly because they were so bought in and, and they love they loved that change and they were hard on the new guys. And, and, you know, a guy like Brett, I think sometimes rubs people the wrong way. But when he got his first playoff hit last year and that was the goal for those guys was to get Brett Burchett to the playoffs because he stayed around for a fifth year. The pure joy from the dugout and from him, like just filled my heart in a way that I, I didn't know was possible. So to know to see them there and see how much they still love the guys that are playing for them and and the pride that they have coming back to see their program doing well, 
it, it makes going to work like even more exciting for me. And, and I know there's a bunch of them that are on me asking about an alumni game. And I've been like, we need to get to the point where you guys can field a team first. And I know they're there now. And I know it'll be a fun battle if we can get that going for them. Uh, Cause they still love baseball. They still love this group. You know, they talk to these guys about what they're doing with their careers and how they got, you know, what they got going for them after college. And that was something that was important to me as a player was all the guys that were willing to help us out when we graduated. And I love that these guys are building those relationships with our, our younger group and they want to keep giving back. And, and I think that's special about being part of a baseball program is that you, you want to give back to those that are still there and it doesn't have to be money. It can just be time or, or a like on Facebook. I tell these guys all the time, they don't understand how many eyes are still on them and how many people, you know, feel great when they win a game or how many texts that I get after a big series win. And I think it's special to know that people care about you and and that you want to win or they want you to win and want you to do well. So I loved having them back. And man, if I could have all of them there every weekend, it would be phenomenal. Coach Hucky, I I know you had the chance to to coach uh, so many of these uh, recent alums as well. Um, Had had to be special for you and to, to see these guys come back, you know, degree in hand off, you know, um, in their careers and so forth. It's, it's just so cool to have them back at Gilcone Field. Yeah, you know, it's, it's you know, over my years, it's always nice. You, you don't know what kind of impact you make um, until the guys come back and they want to be back and be a part of something special and see something else, seeing that what they've laid as a groundwork continuing. I mean, they, they knew, some of those guys knew exactly what it was like before and, and seeing that they're excited about our success whether they're involved as a player or not. And, you know, it's, it kind of goes back to, you know, Coach Victor bringing in the, uh, the I know I probably won't pronounce it, Medea, whatever. Um, Medea. Really, yeah, the, you know, it's like, you know, the, you know being fulfilled the joy of others. I mean, they just they still carry that on. I mean, have them come up and be on the broadcast, that's kind of scary, though, Phil. you got to be careful. <laughs> but it's good to see those guys wanting to be a part, and that's the way they're giving back. And you know, it, it's cool to see them and see the excitement, but it's like, it's like, like coach said, it's fun to see them in a group together because they build some memories together and they're going to continue to build those memories and they're going to have lifelong friends. And, and uh, they're, I know they've been talking, they're talking smack already. They're going to come back and they're going to, they're going to beat us in an alumni game. So, I mean, that's, you know, from the club, bring it on, let's go, you know, but uh, no, it's fun to see it. And it was good to see those guys. Yeah, awesome stuff. Well, speaking about uh, something special, uh, what the Tornadoes have been doing lately, and we've got two of those student athletes we're going to invite into the program now and uh, looking forward to getting to know these two further. Jacob Thompson and Kenny Pridmore have both arrived on the scene. Uh, Coach Carone, we'll leave it to you this time. Uh, Can you introduce these two to NATO Nation? What makes these two tick? Yeah, so I'll start with Kenny Pridmore. He's been our kind of game one, game three catcher so far. He's getting switched around a little bit because of injuries and Tom throwing well this weekend, of course. But, I mean, he just works his tail off all years from Hendersonville. He's a local guy. Um, so he makes that drive in every day and stays long nights at practice. Um, and he loves his craft. He loves working on his swing. I know it was a tough couple weeks in a row for him. Everybody else was doing great. And Hato was like, man, I'm hitting the ball hard and I don't get any hits. <laughs> What's going on? And we kind of – talked about it this week and just got him back to doing what he does well and i was it was great to see him go out there and have success this weekend because he's earned it he's put in the work um and he just kind of had to go back to that that work ethic and let it show up on game day this week and then thompson is like our program personified in so many ways he he puts in the work day after day he cares so much about this program he's one guy who's in the office like once or twice a week to talk with me and coach victory about either his own personal stuff or about the program as a whole um, and man, he gives his heart and soul to this team and this program. And he's somebody that we still got two years of him left. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. But when he's gone, he's going to be missed because he really is the heart of the soul of the team. And you see him pitch maybe game one or game two, but you don't see the energy he gives to the dugout in the other two games. He's not pitching and the leadership he gives to the pitchers, especially young guys like Blake, um, Blake Altshuler, of course. So just two great guys on the team, two great leaders and, Happy to have them on the program and happy to have them as a part of Brevard College Baseball. Well said. Well, looking forward to this conversation with with these two student athletes, a couple of the stars of this past weekend, big series win over Methodist. Coach Victory, Coach Carone, Coach Huckey, 
We'll see you at Gilcone Field tomorrow for the Bob Jones matchup, and then best of luck uh, at Greensboro this weekend. Thanks for joining the show. All right. Thanks, Thank you, Phil. Thanks, Phil. All right, there they go. And as was so eloquently introduced by Coach Carone, Kenny Pridmore, and Jacob Thompson entering the conversation. How are you, Kenny? Good, how are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, great to have you with us as well. And Jacob Thompson, how are you, Jacob? I'm good, Phil. Thanks for having me as always. Yeah, great to have you. Well, Jacob, let's start with you. Um, you know, some breaking news as we're, uh, you know, ramping up to the show this evening. USA South Conference Pitcher of the Week. Congratulations on that. A complete nine innings, three runs, two earned runs, six hits, just one walk. My personal favorite statistic in that line in four strikeouts. Uh, your third career complete game. Tell us about the the outing on Saturday, Jacob, uh, how you were feeling and, you know, how are you able to get that complete game W accomplished? Well, you know, it's always the goal to go as long as I can anytime I get in the game, but more so just this weekend, it was trying to simplify. I feel like many times this year I've tried to do too much or overanalyze the situation. I think this weekend the focus was more so, you know, just stop worrying about attacking hitters and just to strike, attack the strike zone and see if good things will happen, you know, and make adjustments if they decide to hit you then. Yeah, makes a lot of sense, Jacob. And uh, Kenny, I, I know you were, you witnessed, uh, you know, this performance from from Jacob Thompson. Um, what a great way to, you know, start the series and, and so forth. But what did you see from uh, JT? Yeah, I mean, uh, he came out and pitched a really good game. It's always a good t- uh, good thing to watch Jacob when he pitches. He comes out and competes all the time. He's like Vinny said, the heart and soul of the team. And Kenny, a big weekend as well. Six of 10 had a pair of doubles and a pair of RBI uh, over the weekend. You know, um, you know, getting uh, duties behind the dish as well. Tell us a little bit about personally how you felt this weekend, Kenny, and uh, getting it done both at the plate but also defensively. Yeah, I definitely felt a lot more comfortable. As Vinny said, like, come in, do some work, talk to him, talk to my dad as well about my swing. Uh, past couple weekends, you know, been real anxious at the plate, but not many hits have fell. But this weekend, it definitely felt a lot better. Had some hits fall for me. But even behind the plate, had caught Blake, caught Cam. They both threw an amazing game. Fred came in and pitched. Ethan closed the game. All threw amazing. Yeah, and Jacob, I see you nod in your head there. The production we're seeing from the Tornado offense, just explosive at times and uh, putting some big, big run totals up. Um, I know, you, you know you're know you a student of the game and seeing what's happening, but you know, tell us what you're observing as far as these bats getting hotter and hotter for the Tornadoes. Well, I mean, it's awesome to have. You know, I know that no matter what happens day in and day out, you know, as a team, we're going to pick each other up. And uh, early on in the year, you know, found some struggles trying to get a good mix there. But, you know, here as of late, it's been pretty similar every time we go to the field, you know. Go out there, pitching staff tries to throw as many strikes as we can. We know that if it comes down to it and our our uh, lineup has to pick us up, they're going to. And our lineup knows that if it's a day where it's like, hey, guys, you know, this guy's really got it today. I need you all to step up and keep us in this game. We know that we can depend on each other now. I think that's a very, uh, very strong thing to be able to have as a team, to be able to compete unified as a whole. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Kenny Pridmore, senior catcher out of Hendersonville, North Carolina. You know, uh, coaches were talking about how, you know, you're, you're from just down the street and, and so forth. Tell us what that's been like, you know, throughout your career, Kenny, you know, being uh, somewhat local compared to a lot of your teammates and, you know, having to have the the home crowd behind you for all these uh, games at Gilcone Field. Yeah, so when I transferred in, it was definitely a big change just from commuting every single day. So I live about – probably like 30 minutes away. So, you know, tarp pools are a different story, but, you know, I'm not at all of them. But other than that, it's I try to hang out with everybody as much as I can, but other than that, we're all really close. Yeah, you can see the the, – you know, the love for, for Hendo, uh, you know, on the <laughs> board here, uh, Jacob Thompson, meanwhile, from, from gray, Georgia, uh, tell us a little bit about your journey, Jacob, you know, coming from, from the state of Georgia, finding your way to Brevard college. Oh, uh, well, we spoke about it a little bit last time on the show and, um, you know, just grew up really loving baseball, wanting somewhere that was gonna really just want me back. That was my main focus coming out of high school and, I felt like that was a good match here. Obviously, I had a buddy of mine that played here for a year, 
that I was able to get a little bit more of an insight, actually came to a game two years before my senior year and kind of had an idea of what it was about. But um, I've really enjoyed being here. It's my third year here now, and it's just I'm super glad I decided to come here of all places just because it is a big family, and I feel like I've really been able to make a – a bunch, a bunch of lasting relationships and an impact on a lot of people. And that was my main focus coming into all of this was to be able to walk out with great friends, great relationships and great memories. So I think I've accomplished that so far. Yeah. And more memories to come, especially the way the tornadoes play in this season, really exciting stuff. Currently nine and three first place in the USA South conference. Kenny, tell us a little bit about, you know, just the, the attitude of the team at this point, uh, you guys coming off the two big uh, series wins over NC Wesley and Methodist, but there's plenty of work still to come. Yeah. Right now we're just playing our game, taking one game at a time. I mean, we've had what, three really good weekends yeah. the past three weekends and we're just going to keep taking it one game at a time keep swinging the ball or swinging the bat pitching really good playing defense behind the pitcher anything to add to that jacob as far as you know just the you know the the upside of this team and you know the the idea that you know first place in the usa south conference at this juncture of the season speaks for itself but you know the the, the sky's the limit as far as where you guys can go from here Right. I mean, as you said, we've had three very good weekends the, uh, the past three weeks, but I think everybody that's a part of this team and is around this team knows that at the end of the day, those those talks at the end of that game three weren't what we wanted it to be. At all the end of all three of those series, is we felt like we could have very, very easily, you know, put ourselves in a position to be able to come home with a sweep all three weekends. And I think it's just very important now for us to – keep maintaining our energy and just rolling energy over. I think that the biggest focus is this team's had as opposed to years past is, you know, we're very talented, but we're really bought into showing up to the field and just genuinely wanting to be there more than you do today. And I think that that's very obvious. If you look at the energy that comes out of our dugout, how hype guys are after a big pitch, a big strikeout, you know, a big double, anything that they can do to help the team. That's everybody's, that's everybody's common goal. And I think that, as of this far in the season, you know, we're finally starting to click and come together and show some of those things. And we definitely have very high potential, but I think that we could all come to a consensus and agree that there's better baseball to be played and we're right at the edge of it. And all it takes is just that one more weekend to click it out. And once we get rolling and we have energy high for three games, it's, we're going to be a very tough team to play no matter who you are in the country. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, uh, back in action tomorrow, a non-conference game, midweek game versus Bob Jones. A bit of a local rival. You know, I've had some good battles against Bob Jones over the years, no doubt. So looking forward to that one at Gil Cone Field at 4 o'clock. Then uh, Tornadoes on the road at Greensboro trying to keep this, um, you know, uh, conference success going this time hitting the road uh, the matchup being played in High Point, North Carolina versus Greensboro North uh, College. Kenny, uh, tell us a little bit about what you're up to academically here at Brevard College. So I'm a business major, and I plan on, like, after college and graduation, uh, my dad's a stonemason, so I'll probably either end up working for him and maybe thinking about doing a little coaching too. Outstanding. Uh, Kenny, part of that senior class uh, here at Brevard College. And Jacob, a junior, what are you up to uh, in the classroom, Jacob? Uh, I am a physical education and recreation major. Uh, my original plan out of high school was to specialize in special education and get my degree in that, but um, it was a little bit late on the back end here to be able to follow through, go to Western Carolina and get that certification that way. But um, I've taken the physical education path and I hope to go back home and find a teaching spot somewhere in the hometown of old Jones County, Georgia, and take over a coaching position there and somehow, some way, just be able to give back to this, not only the students and kids in our community, but also the up and coming baseball players that want to do what I've been able to do coming from exactly where they came from. So great stuff. Kenny Pridmore and Jacob Thompson, our guest here at tornado talk. Uh, one more for you guys, you know, it was alumni weekend this past week and we talked to uh, the coaches a little bit about this as well. Um, you know, would love your comments about, you know, the, those recent alumni, the guys you guys got to play with these last couple of years and how much they meant to, you know, not just the success that you guys are uh, having this season, but the success moving forward with this program. Kenny? Yeah, so, I mean, like Vic and Vinny said, like Jack, Brett, Peter, uh, uh, Jason was there too. But, I mean, they all started the program basically. They built it from the bottom up. 
it's great seeing the guys here too. It was great talking to them. Yeah, no doubt. Jacob? Um, I told each and every one of those guys that was here this weekend, you know, Peter, Brett, Chap, Junker, Jack. Uh, I saw Zach Allison running around somewhere out there at Gilcomb this weekend. I told each and every one of those guys, man, I was like, you know, I really appreciate everything that y'all did, and I really hate that y'all weren't able to reap the full benefits of everything that y'all put in, but I promise you the things that y'all went for and the things y'all played behind and y'all's mantras, all of that stuff, we're still carrying it on to this day, and I was just telling them, like, it's, it's so much easier now, you know, when they were trying to take over the reins, freshmen or sophomores, people who had been there for a year or two didn't really know how to adapt to that change, and I was just telling them that I'm thankful for that being the culture since I was a freshman. And I know we've been waiting to get those ropes in our hands and we got them now. And each and every freshman class that comes in, you know, this year, last year, from here on out is going to know, like, that's the standard. That's what we plan to do here. That's the excellence that we are expecting from our players. And that's the standard we're going to hold ourselves to. And it's not a, it's not a new thing. It's not a, why are we doing that? It's, it's, this is who we are and this is what we stand for. And as long as we continue to hold fast to that, I think we're going to do really great things from here on out. Yeah, fantastic. Well said, both of you guys. BC will be back in action tomorrow, 4 o'clock versus Bob Jones at Gil Cone Field. Hope to see fans there. Well, before we let you go, Kenny and Jacob, you guys know the drill. Shout outs. Kenny? Colson Miller swung the bat well this weekend. Uh, CP with his second home run. Cam pitched great. Blake pitched great. Every pitcher. Caesar, uh, Ethan also, Jacob, pit, all pitched very well. Jacob, shout outs for us. Uh, first and foremost, shout out God, my Lord and Savior, for everything that He's provided me with and all the opportunities and people, coaches, people that I've gotten guidance from, friends, family, everyone that I've met, everyone that's a big part of my life. Just shout out to all of them for keeping my head on straight and providing a stability that I'm able to go and focus on what I want to do each and every weekend, which is go and win ball games. And shout out to the entire team from top to bottom. Shout out our lineup. I've been absolutely mashing the ball recently. Shout out those guys getting those DH and pitch hit opportunities. They've been killing it. The guys behind them at practice that are keeping the dugout super energized all three games, those guys are biting at, the biting at their nails to get into the game. And I really appreciate just them being locked in like they are because I know whenever that chance happens, they're going to be ready and they're going to know what's, what's coming. And lastly, not least, definitely, though, shout out all the P's, shout out the staff and just – Shout out my boys, man. We ride for each other each and every day. It's a great opportunity we have to be able to keep come out and do this. Great stuff. Kenny Pridmore, uh, senior catcher out of Hendersonville, North Carolina. Jacob Thompson, the junior righty. And the reigning USA South Conference Pitcher of the Week uh, at the moment uh, joining us this evening. Hey, guys, really great to have you on the program. Uh, best of luck tomorrow versus Bob Jones at Greensboro this weekend. And uh, we'll see you uh, back at Gilcone Field. Thanks for having us, Phil. Thanks for having us. All right, there they go. Well, that wraps up another edition of Tornado Talk. Appreciate all of our guests uh, from track and field, from men's lacrosse, and then also baseball. Uh, be sure to come on out on Friday, the inaugural Tornado Invitational, uh, the Tornado Classic happening Friday, April 12th at the Frank Patton Track. It's all day. Uh, just an outstanding event uh, getting ready to be put on here. Uh, the first ever track and field event hosted by the college itself. Uh, we did host the conference championships last year, but uh, this will be unprecedented in an inaugural event happening on Friday. Also baseball and men's lacrosse tomorrow, including that battle, the blue Ridge and all sorts of other events. Check out bctornadoes.com or follow the tornadoes on social media. Well, big thanks to our producer, Joseph Marvin, also Cassidy Hutto and Emily Denego for all their help behind the scenes. And uh, thank you NATO nation for continuing to follow and support Brevard College Tornado Athletics. For all of us at BC, go Tornado!